Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video is be spotlighting a truly odd species of raptor, the Galapagos hawk. Something you don't hear a whole lot about, and one that I'm very excited about. Partly because of what it is, and partly because of where it lives. Now, the Galapagos hawk lives in the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands, I hope you've heard of them before, are incredibly famous. They're a small group of volcanic islands that are directly on the equator, so very hot, and they're a province of Ecuador, of the country of Ecuador. So they're about a thousand kilometers uh, off the coast of Ecuador. Again, right, the, the equator cuts right through them. This is a very hot place. And it's most famous, arguably, for not only the diversity of wildlife there, but for Charles Darwin and the Voyage of the Beagle, which took place there, and all that he learned that helped us understand about uh, genetics and animal evolution and adaptation that came by observing comparative species on these uh, localized islands. But there's the hawk species that lives there, the Galapagos hawk, and it's truly an oddball. But the Galapagos Islands themselves, each island is a little different. Some of them are more desert, some of them are a little more tropical, and some of them have active volcanoes and active lava flows. So it's, it's a very diverse place. It's, a, it's an environment where each island gives a different set of problems. Now Galapagos hawks live on these islands and can go back and forth if they so choose. Uh, the prey that's there is different, but if you were to go there, you would find a lot of strange animals that uh, seem out of place. For example, right on the equator you wouldn't expect to find penguins, but there's Galapagos penguins. There are cormorants. Cormorants are, are a fish hunting bird, but the cormorants here don't fly. They've lost flight because there were no land predators that they had to contend with, so they had no problem to just nest and live right on the ground. There are uh, giant tortoises, big enough for a human to sit on, which Galapagos hawks love to perch on. There are species of iguanas. There are land iguanas that are more tan and live more in the volcanic highlands and will actually dig down and burrow and let the warmth under from the volcanic eruptions warm their eggs and there's marine iguanas marine iguanas are strange they just they uh the, both land and marine iguanas came from the common green iguana but marine iguanas will go underwater and eat kelp and eat uh, you know seaweed right off the rocks and then in doing so they get a lot of salt water in going through their system and they cool down so they'll come back out come on land where they need to bask to rewarm themselves. They're cold-blooded. They have to thermoregulate. And then their their body will process through and expel the salt through their nose. So you just see them snorting out salt, like little miniature whales squirting out water. So uh, these are all over in huge colonies, these marine iguanas. Uh, but to understand the Galapagos hawk, we need to understand where it came from. So we first have to talk a little bit about another species, the Swainson's hawk. Swainson's hawk are, are incredibly common. They live in North America in the summer and they migrate all the way down to South America for the winter. It's one of, one of, if not the longest migration of any raptor species. Every year we see them passing through, doing their thing. Swainson's hawks uh, are, 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 are kind of weefy. They're kind of diminutive. They're built like a red-tailed hawk, but kind of scaled down. Uh, they usually don't get much heavier than a uh, thousand grams. They have sissy little feet. They can grip hard. I've been gripped by Swainson's hawks, and I know people who have actively trained them to hunt. It's rare, but but they're they're built. They hunt mostly insects, which is strange to see an almost red-tailed hawk-sized bird going after mostly insects. They will go after rodents as well and they can be trained to hunt larger prey. But they're just kind of easy going. They've got a tiny beak, their wings are more pointed like a falcon, and they're more easy going. They're more tolerant of people. Uh, they, they usually nest, not always, but they usually nest just like in brush close to the ground, where a red-tailed hawk in the same area might nest high in a tree and be more uh, nervous of people. Swainson's hawks, you can often get right up next to them and they're like, huh, what, what do you want? They're just oddly tolerant of people and this is, uh, Swainson's hawks are one of the species that when, <clears throat> when tractors plow up a farm field, doing so digs up the burrows of rodents. So suddenly rodents that have been underground rawr, are now above and they'll just follow along by the hundreds or even the thousands following behind, uh, getting this free meal of uh, 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 unexpectedly exposed rodents. So Swainson's hawks are very smart, again, highly migratory, but they're, they're weefy. They're just not strong compared to a red tail. They're, they're just kind of, they're not 
They're not built that way. Of all the Budios, all the buzzards in North America, both bigger and smaller, if you scale them all to the same size, Swainson's hawks would be kind of the, ee, the, the weefiest. Nothing wrong with that. They do what they do. But in their migrations, North America, South America, uh, th some of them got blown off course. So there was a study done in 2005 studying the mitochondrial DNA of the Galapagos hawks, as well as the mitochondrial DNA of Swainson's hawks. And what was found was amazing. Now you have to, you have to understand, here's what's really strange about Galapagos hawks. There's only about 270 to 300 individuals. That's it. That's it. Any other species that had that few numbers would be critically endangered. We gotta save them, they're on the brink of extinction. Galapagos hawks only live on the Galapagos Islands and they're not even listed as endangered. Why? Because they have maxim successfully maximized the saturation of what the Galapagos Islands can support. Okay, so they are filled. So if you take the microcosm of the Galapagos Islands and make that its own little world, which it is to them, they can't support any greater number than that many hawks. That's it, that's all they can handle. So that is amazing. So this study done in 2005, studying the mitochondrial DNA was, was studying from hawks from each island. Remember, this is the most, one of the most, if not the most highly inbred uh, hawk raptor species in the world. Uh, questionably, perhaps um, you might have a similar thing with uh, condors, California condors, and you definitely do with Mauritius kestrels that were brought back from extinction. But these birds, 270 to 300 individuals, 330, that's kind of the range, 270 to 330, that's it. That's amazing. But it's kind of a fun thing because then the people who were conducting the study in 2005, their genetic samples that were taken were really covered at all. Such an inbred group covering every, you know, 330 individuals. Geez, if you do, you, can, you could, if you, if you sampled 150, you've got like basically half of the population was sampled. So they had very accurate results. And again, they also did this with Swainson's hawks who were believed to be the closest relative. What they found out was shocking. There is 0.42% genetic difference between Swainson's hawks and Galapagos hawks. And studying all the details of this study show that they branched off from each other no more than, uh, probably less than 300,000 years ago, which is nothing. That's a Genetically, that's a blink of an eye. So what's strange is that even though they are not even 1% different from each other, not even half a percent genetically, morphologically, they are incredibly different, incredibly different. And that is because the land where they have been has shaped them. Swainson's hawks run a diverse range, so you have diverse colors, you know, it's whatever, they're adaptable. But the Galapagos hawk has, some, has a range that's very specific, and has only certain things that they can go after and only certain ways that can be favored to live, hunt, and reproduce. Uh, you're, you know, you're dealing with volcanoes, you're dealing with oceans, you're dealing with very tough prey. And, and it shaped them into something really quite remarkable. So Galapagos hawks themselves are like Swainson's hawks on steroids. Like a Swainson's hawk, they're very easy going. People can get right up next to them. Now on the one hand, isolated islands with that are not rich in predators, especially terrestrial predators, animals usually are not familiar with people and you can get close to them and it's no biggie. That's to be expected. But we also know Swainson's hawks are that way. You can get very close to Swainson's hawks. And uh, it seems Galapagos hawks have carried on that way of life. Their feet are enormous, just gargantuan, oversized, thick, thick like the feet of a ferruginous hawk, but long like the feet of a red-tailed hawk. So it's gone from these little sissy little Swainson's feet, to, just these monstrous feet because of the prey they're going after. Which is mo now they they will still hunt the insects on the island. There are large locusts and there's giant centipedes. They'll go after snakes and lava lizards and things like that. But they actively do hunt the marine iguanas regularly, land iguanas. They'll attack sea fur uh, 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 fur <laughs> sea fur <laughs> fur seal pups and uh, young turtles, uh, sea turtles and tortoises. And so they're hunting some very uh, uh, tough prey, very tough prey. And also their beak, 
They're be- they look like an eagle. Swainson's hawks have this ee- little sissy face and a little beak, and they're kind of eh. They're kind of delicately built because they're mostly going after locusts and grasshoppers. But the Galapagos hawk, where it's largely hunting incredibly tough, thick-skinned, scaly prey like iguanas, has developed a beak like an eagle and a head like an eagle. You can still see, when you start looking at them and looking at their color phases, you can see, oh yeah, I see that they did come from Swainson's hawks. But they're just the monster version, which I think is awesome. Just so cool. An odd thing about them is they're often group hunters. So uh, two to three to four of them will go together. But it's not like with Harris Hawks. Harris Hawks will hunt together, organize as a, as a pack. This is like, well, we're on this island. We're kind of beachcombing and looking for food. We're flying together, and it's often a parent and their children kind of going together. So they don't have the social hierarchy that you would have with Harris Hawks. But it is still technically kind of a form of social hunting. But it's rather than thinking of them in terms of like a Harris Hawk, you would do, you'd be wiser to compare it to many species of caracaras. Caracaras are uh, cousins of falcons that often are beachcombers, often island dwellers or beachcombers, where a lot of caracaras will hunt in, you know, just looking on the beach, hunting together, looking around, waiting for food. Oh, you know, a dead whale washed up. Okay, we're going to eat that. Oh, we're going to go harass uh, seabirds on their nests and try to eat something. Oh, there's a lizard. I'm going to catch that. But they have these giant iguanas that they're going after. So, you know, a little different than what caracaras are doing. But they fill a similar ecological role as a number of caracaras do. But what a strange species. Again, only 270 to 330 individuals that, you know, they're nesting near lava flows. Uh, they're, you know, they're hunting these wild prey items. And I think that makes them truly a uh, remarkable species. They, I'm sure nobody has ever flown them. To my knowledge, there's no populations outside of the Galapagos, not even in captive breeding programs. Uh, if you're aware of any, feel free to put it down below. I'm sure that this species will never have the opportunity to be used in falconry. But if they were, I think that they would not fly like a Swainson's hawk. They're, they don't have to do a lot of active hunting. There's a lot of food available. It kind of comes to them, so it's more of watch and wait. I think you would have the power of a really tough red-tailed hawk, but something more um, halfway between a red-tailed hawk and a European common buzzard which is another booty, another type of hawk, right? That's more kind of easygoing and mellow. If you combine those two, I believe that would be the flight style if anybody ever did have the opportunity to train and hunt with one. I don't think they'd be the most aggressive hunter, but on the kill, just incredibly powerful. So I wanted to share this because, again, it's a species we almost never talk about. If you enjoy learning a little bit more about this unique species, please let me know down below. I've had a few people request that I do species spotlights like this. And it doesn't, falconry involves uh, knowledge of wildlife, knowledge of uh, conservation and actively trying to help species in the wild. That's part of the whole bigger picture. So it's wise to understand the raptors that are out there. But if you would like me to have more videos like this that spotlight unique species, even if they're maybe not used in the sport, please let me know down below and I'd happily make more videos like this. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe and as always, happy hawking.